All right, we're going to show you how to play Guildmaster uh, over three rounds, starting from the Quick Start Guide's um, pre-planned setup of the first turn. So um, I'm here with Chris, the designer of the game. Hey, how's it going? And Nathan. Hello, hello. And Brenna. Hey. All righty. So um, as I mentioned, we're going to go through uh, three rounds of the game. We're just going to start from a pre-planned first round where everything has been mapped out for us. And then we're going to um, go through a couple more rounds where we just talk through us uh, as if we're playing the game normally and show you how to play the game uh, over three rounds. Now, it's normally nine rounds, but uh, this will give you enough of an idea how to play. All right, Chris, do you want to take us away with how the first round works? Yeah, sure. Um, so like Kim was saying, uh, in the quick start guide, um, everyone's set up for the first round is pre-planned. So in Guildmaster, there's two main phases where everyone will uh, assign orders to their adventurers, um, telling them to do the various things on the board. Um, so at the beginning of the game, in the quick start, this is pre-planned. So if everyone reveals their board, you should see... Uh, what everyone is doing there. Okay. Um, so everyone has an order board, which is shown uh, here. And the order board has four different spaces for placing orders. At the beginning of the game, you can only use two. Uh, and everyone's first order is resolved, uh, going from left to right on the board, going through builders, adventurers, and then contracts. And then once everyone's first order is resolved, we move on to everyone's second order and do the same thing. Um, so first we have a look at everyone's first order and check whether anyone is going for builders and we can see that the blue guild, which is Brenner, uh, has their builder placement card here. So they're sending these adventurers to go for builders and no one else is. So now we'll resolve this order. Uh, so how builders work, uh, on the board here, there's a token that, um, points to the cost of each builder, and once a builder is hired, this token will move up one space, and then you can choose to hire any more. Each one being hired moves the token up. Uh, you can only spend gold on builders um, with gold placed onto the order space itself. Uh, so this player has put all of their seven starting gold uh, onto the builder's order, so they can buy, they can hire one builder for two gold, they'll pay their two gold, hire that one builder, and then they can hire another builder for five gold, for three gold, but five all up. And then if they wanted to hire another builder, it would cost another three gold, but as there's only two left, uh, they finish there. So any gold you don't spend on builders gets placed back in your treasury, and you can use that on a later round. Um, okay, so now this player has hired two builders, so... Once you hire builders, you immediately trade them in for upgrades, shown on the left here. Um, there are three types of upgrades. There are these skill upgrades shown at the top. Then there's these core upgrades um, that have a level two and a level three, and each guild starts out with a level one of each of these core upgrades. And there's also these prestige upgrades, um, which we'll go into a bit later, so you can just ignore them for now. Um, so the cost of each upgrade in builders is shown on the bottom right of each token. So if you look at the bar, this one costs two builders, the mess hall costs one builder, stables cost two builders, and all of these uh, skill upgrades cost one builder. Um, so I'll, I'll just quickly go over what these core upgrades do. So if we look at uh, a player's order, uh, sorry, upgrade board, um, the first upgrade, which is the stables, tells you how many orders you can do per round. So at the beginning of the game, everyone has a level one stables, so the first two order spaces can be used. Uh, the next upgrade, the Messel, tells you how many adventurers you can put on to uh, make a team with. Um, so that's how many you can put onto a single order space. So if you look at this uh, red guild here, they have two adventurers on a team there, and then one on a team here. If you upgrade your Messel, uh, you can start putting more adventurers onto a team. And then the last one, the bar, at the end of every round, you get two income um, for your bar. And if you upgrade your bar, you'll start getting more income. So 
back to this higher builder's order. Uh, this player's got two builders, um, and they're going to spend that on uh, either a stables or a bar. I think a bar is a good idea, so maybe they'll yep, get that. I was going to take the bar. Excellent. Okay, so they upgrade their bar, and then they immediately get three fame, shoot at the top right of the bar. Um, so the aim of the game is to be the most famous. You get fame from uh, building upgrades, hiring adventurers, and doing contracts. But we'll get to all that in a sec. Okay, so this player's hired their two builders. Uh, this token stays where it is until the end of the round, so if anyone else wants to hire builders this round, uh, the price will increase. Uh, okay, so that's this player's order one finished. Um, now we'll see whether anyone's going for adventurers, and it looks like the orange guild and the red guild are. Uh, both going for the same adventurer, adventurer number C. So because two guilds are um, going for the same adventurer, um, there's some conflict resolution here, where first we check um, who's spending the most. Uh, yeah, and it looks like red is spending, sorry, bidding six, six yeah. and orange is bidding seven. Um, oh, yeah, so we just, yeah, uh, so but before we get into that, actually, let's just have a look at how bidding for adventures works. Uh, works so, um, if you look at the adventurer board, uh, the adventurer section of the board. Uh, each adventurer has a minimum bid shown under the letter for each adventurer. And um, there's also a moon symbol next to each number. And you look at the moon symbol that matches the moon for the round. And the moon for the round is shown on the round track here. At the beginning of the game, it is a half moon. Uh, at the end of each round, this token will move down and flip. So next round, it will be a full moon, and then another half moon, etc. Um, so this adventurer C has a minimum bid of 6, so you need to spend at least 6 gold to recruit them. Uh, but you can spend more, in the case that if someone else goes for the same adventure, whoever spends the most will get them first, uh, which is what's happened here. So now Orange will get uh, this adventurer by spending all of their gold. So they'll spend all 7. And then they'll get to take this card. And when you recruit an adventurer, you get the fame shown at the top right. So orange will also get three fame. Uh, so now the red guild unfortunately missed out on recruiting that adventurer. So they get to take all their gold back into their treasury. And because they missed out, uh, they get to either um, do a private contract or uh, attempt to wander roll. So, um, sadly, Kim, do you want to go through private contracts yeah. and wandering? So, sadly, I don't have any private contracts. I do. The way the game works is that uh, the team that you have comes with a, a certain types of skills on the adventurers. Uh, and Guala here and Tani both have um, some in the charm skill, the yellow one. And a little bit Tani has in the uh, Guile skill as well. So um, together the team could throw maybe four dice at a Charm skill roll or two dice at a Guile skill roll. But as you can see, I've got these two private contracts here underneath my guild upgrade board. And I can't, uh, neither of these are Charm or Guile contracts. So sadly, I can't go for a private contract this round. Uh, so it really means I'm just going to have to go through Wandering. And when I wander, I just grab a number of dice equal to whichever skill I want to use that I have, you know, a numbers in, in that particular team. And in this case, obviously I'd choose the four dice available in charm here. So I'm just going to select four dice and roll them. And I'm going to get a certain number of um, fame and coins depending based on what I roll. Um, okay. So you can see with the four dice, I have rolled a total of 17 here. Uh, which is good. Now, normally a 17 would get me one fame and one coin. Uh, but if I can get this up to 20, I'll get two fame and 
two coin. Uh, so uh, I do have, as part of my starting setup, a theater, which is a skill upgrade that every um, guard, uh, guild comes with. And in my particular case, I'm best at charm. So I've got like a theater built into my guild so I can go out and do the, the acting and that kind of stuff. Um, so I get to reroll two dice or one dice twice. So I'm just going to choose that three and hope that I can reroll it into a six because if I do, I'll be at 20 and I'll get an extra fame. No, it's a four and I'm going to get to do it one more time because I can reroll twice. And it's a five. So I fall cool. just one short at 19. So I'll just grab my one coin and I'll get one fame for that. And I'm done. Okay, so after we've finished recruiting that adventurer, uh, we need to make sure that there's a new adventurer coming into the tavern um, in the next round. Now, normally these sit underneath the cards that you can see here, but um, for tabletop, for tabletopia, unfortunately, we have to have them off to the side. So, um, what's the next order? Okay. So now everyone's completed their first order except for me, the Green Guild here. Yeah. And I'm going for contract number one. So how going for a contract works, if we have a look at the contract card here, um, the top right of the contract card tells you the reward if you complete the contract. So this one here gives you two gold and then three fame if you complete it. Then underneath that, uh, there's a number of skill icons and the number underneath each skill icon is the number you need to roll to complete this contract. Uh, and you only need to um, attempt one of these skills. Um, all of the skill checks are uh, alls. So complete either might, uh, arcane, or guile here, and then you complete the contract. And then underneath that, uh, each contract has an effect. Some of them are bonuses, which happen straight away, and some of them are boons, which you can do a bit later. I'll explain those in a sec. So to complete this, well, to attempt this contract, um, I use my adventurer here, Fang, who has three dice in Guile, and I'm attempting to roll an 11 or higher. So I'll do that now. And I got a 13. Beautiful. Okay, so when you complete a contract, first you get the reward shown at the top right. So I'll take two gold, and then three fame. Uh, next, if there's a bonus, you get to do that. So this bonus effect here says either uh, gain one gold or gain two gold, then choose another guild to also gain two gold. Uh, and I will do the second part of that effect, so I'll gain two gold, and then... Uh, Kim, you can also gain two gold, seeing oh, as you missed out on your first order. Very kind. No worries. I'll okay. Ah, uh, you better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then once you complete a contract, you get to take it and put it next to your board here. Um, and then the last step for completing a contract, you get to pick which deck to draw the next contract from. There are common heroic and legendary contracts. Each one gets a bit more difficult. Uh, but I think for now, I might just draw another common and put this here. Uh, new contracts go face down onto the board, and then they're revealed face up at the start of the next round. Uh, okay, so that's everyone's first order complete. Uh, so now we just move to the second order, starting again with builders and then going through the board. So first we check whether anyone's going for builders, and it looks like I am with my team here. Uh, I've put down... Uh, all of my gold, and with my seven gold, I can buy one builder for three, and then I can buy another builder for four, which is everything I have. So I'll pay all of that. What are you going to buy? Um, I think I might just get a stables for something different. Stables lets me use three orders per round. Um, so once I get some more adventures, I'll be able to utilize that a bit better. So I'll get the stables and three more fame. Okay, cool. so that's me done. Uh, now we check to see whether anyone's going for adventures, which they aren't. No. And then we go to contracts. Uh, so orange over here is going for contract one, but unfortunately contract one's already been completed. 
Um, oh, no. Me, so, so they can't attempt that. Um, so same as when uh, the Red Guild missed out on getting an adventure out, when you miss out on going for a contract, you have the same choice. You can either do a private contract or you can attempt a wonder roll. Uh, and I think... Uh, Nathan's going to do a wonder. Uh, sorry, a private contract. Seeing as they can, I am uh, attempt this one right here. So I'll let you do that. Get those rats. Oh well, yeah. In this case, I have Gilthor, who has three in the might skill, and he also has the ability to re-roll two of his dice. Um, so I have this private contract here, which is a contract you get at the start of the game. You can choose to go for if you uh, can't go for the action that you intended to go for. So I'm going to throw, roll three dice to get a nine and have. Uh, two rerolls, so pretty good odds. Let's not jinx it. Oh, look, smashed it. Beautiful, 15. So I complete the contract, and I get the reward. So I get two gold and three fame. And while you're getting that gold, you get the extra gold from Gilthor, who has this special ability which can be used yep. every round of the game. So I'll explain yep. that now. So um, adventurers, most of them also have a unique ability, which is shown at the bottom of each card. Um, there's an icon for each ability that tells you when that ability can be used. If it's a sun, you can use it every round. If it's a, a moon, you can only use it when the moon matches. Uh, and then underneath that, it will say either plot phase or action phase. Plot phase happens at the start of every round, which we'll get to in a sec. And action phase is what's happening now when we're resolving all our orders. So everyone will start with one adventurer that has this ability when this adventurer completes a contract alone, gain two gold. So uh, Guildford just did that, so they'll get an extra two gold for that. And also, if you remember, uh, when I attempted contract one with Fang, he had the same ability, so he'll also get uh, two gold for when that happened. Um, yeah, and the other um, thing that I neglected to mention is that there's a bonus on this card. So I, upon completing this contract, I also get to choose... Uh, the effect of this bonus so is two options. The first is I can choose another guild to gain two fame, and if I do, I gain one fame. And the other option is to just uh, choose a guild to lose two fame. So in this instance, um, Kim's looking lose a bit one sad fame. over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's his one fame. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bump him up by one, so that I can gain two fame uh, as well. Much. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I Sorry, Nathan, now the other way future. around. He goes up by two, you go up by one. Oh, sorry, sorry, other way around. Yeah, my bad. All right. Uh, so that's contract one finished. Good. Uh, and now uh, the red guild and the blue guild are both going for contract four. Yeah, uh, Kim, would you like to explain how this conflict works? Okay, so in the Second order, uh, the final second order, both Brenner and I are going for contract four. You can see I've got contract four programmed here and so does Brenner. So we've both sent teams to go into contract four. Now contract four has targets of 10 in logic and 10 in spirit and gives three coins to fame and a free builder hire that you could use immediately to go and build something, which is pretty sweet. So um, let's have a look at the teams Brenner and I have before we look at our options. So Brenner's got Odeon plus the reroll skill available from the library. So two possible rerolls with three dice against the 10 in Arcane. And I've just got a bit more of a vanilla team, three dice without any reroll abilities. You can see I don't have any um, spirit skill rerolls here. So Brenner's kind of got the advantage there, but uh, hopefully if we work together, that means we'll, we'll increase our chance of actually making this one. So. When we go to this contract together, we can decide to cooperate or conflict. If we cooperate, we could either go uh, and make a team together on one of the skills or do uh, attempt the contract on both different skills with each of our separate teams. And then in either case, if anybody succeeds, then we all succeed. So even if uh, I fail on my spirit check and Brenna succeeds on her logic check, then we still get the contract. Uh, and we will have agreed to come to some kind of split of the contract, which I'll cover in a second. Uh, now, however, Brenner might be thinking, well, I've got the extra two re-rolls. I could do this myself. Now, if Brenner decided to conflict when we decide how we're going to do this, it would work like this. She would get to attempt the contract first, but at a penalty 
um, to the skill check target equal to the number of dice that she would be rolling. In this case, she's rolling three dice against logic. So her target number would go up to 13. And if she was to roll less than 13, she would fail outright. And then I would be able to attempt the contract at the smaller number of just 10. So Brenna, um, I don't want to conflict here. I think we could cooperate <laughs> nicely and, um, you know, between us, my, my spirit skills and, and your logic, I'm sure we can get this one done. So how would you want to split this? Um, hmm. Keep in mind, we can't split the fame. Everybody gets the full yeah. amount of fame, but we can split the money and the, the rest of it. Um, I'll take... I'll give you all the money if I can have the fame and the ability. I think that's a fair deal. I'm happy with that. Um, okay. Yep. Okay. So now we will grab our tokens and we move them to our hands. And then we can put out whichever side we like. Okay. And three, two, one, reveal. All right. So. Both green means we're both cooperating. If I had flipped, for example, red, that would mean I'm conflicting and I get to attempt it first, but that's not what happens. All right, so um, because we don't have really any overlapping skills, uh, oh, we actually do. So, Brenna, would you prefer to go and make a single team with five dice or should we go on two different roles? We're probably better off going for five dice. Because my yeah. could join your Odeon in a... Yeah, and I have the re-roll for that. Yeah. So. so let's do that. You can roll your three dice. I'll roll two. Okay. <laughs> wow, terrible. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, luckily, I'm here because I rolled 10 as well. I'm not... Like, do the dice just rotate? Do they actually roll? Yeah. I don't know. I think they do. Did, did you press R or like... I pressed R, which is supposed to roll them. <laughs> that looks like a roll. Better? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so uh, with my 10 and your 9, we get 19, which is well over the target needed of 10. And um, I'll get three coins. We both get two fame. I'll give you two fame. Although I guess I didn't really think that through because then Odeon's ability doesn't really activate because he technically didn't do that alone, even that's though he was right. the only one on my team. Yeah, that's, that's true, sadly. Um, but the good news is you still get to recruit a builder for free, which is almost like you got half an extra action. Um, yeah. We'll see. So I gave you two fame for that. Oh, sorry. I probably just gave myself two more then. I think you did. <laughs> uh, but you get to um, use that builder to get one more thing, which will also give you more fame. So what did you want to get for that one builder? I think based on what my other adventurers have, I'm going to take the strength three roll. Okay, cool. All right. So the yep. reason... Also important to note that whenever a builder is hired for any reason, the token still goes up on space. Indeed. Not Indeed. that it makes much difference now, but I just did it then. Yep, cool. And Brenna gets one more fame for that. So Brenna, I'll move you up to six fame. Thank because you. even building that, uh, that armory there. It's good. All right. So I like the way you decided to concentrate on your um, extra ability there. So now you've got reroll skills in both of your primary abilities, which is great. Uh, all right. Um, now, I don't think we really resolved who does, who gets to keep the card itself. And there's a kind of default fallback in the rules where whoever rolled the highest gets whatever was forgotten about. Uh, so Brenner, I think you rolled nine. I somehow mm -hmm. cheekily rolled 10 with my two dice, so I believe I might take that card. How about that? Although I could have used my re-rolls well, if I had known that mattered. <laughs> then you should, because you got a one there. Go for sure it. you can beat me. Yeah. Okay, yes, that gets uh, so Yeah, just me. Card. I'm fine with that. <laughs> you take that card. You earn Okay. It. Uh, and whoever takes the card also gets to decide what level to replace it with so what level will yeah, i think i'm gonna it? go for another common i'm not ready to jump into heroic yet okay cool uh all right and i don't think i got my money so i'll just grab my three money so i didn't really get to yep. do much this turn but i did get rich well i had a lot of money left over <laughs> um okay cool 
Uh, well, that's the end of the first round. That was the pre-planned round where the, um, in the quick start guide, it uh, pre-plans all of those orders for us as if we'd done it ourselves. Uh, we'll now go to the end step um, where we get money and reset things on the board. So everyone earns money equal to their bar in income. So I'm getting two. Brennan's going to get four because she upgraded her bar to the second level bar and the other guy's getting two as well. Yep. Each get our money. And then we do a few things on the board. We just move the round marker forward and flip it over. Then we flip up every card on the board that was face down. And now yep. and then reset, reset the, the cost of the builders. Yeah. Drag yep. that down. Did I forget anything? I think we're good. I think we are. Okay. Okay, so now we're ready to go to the uh, second round. And um, in this round, we'll just plan what we want to do ourselves. So it'll just be a quiet minute of planning while we work out what we want to do. And then we'll um, actually, first of all, we go to the plot phase, right, Chris? Yep. All right. So because it's now a half moon in round two, um, we check around the table and see if anybody has any half moon plot abilities that they would like to use. I do have one. Does anybody else have one? Sorry. I'm going to be full, full moon. Full moon. Oh, full, full moon, moon yeah. Sorry. Full moon. Oh, full moon, yeah. yeah. Full moon plot abilities. I do have one. I do. Uh, I don't. Mine is an action phase okay. ability. Yeah, same. All right. And how do we resolve this? Well, my ability. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yep, fame descending. Okay. So, Kim, you have the list, so you'll go second, and then Nathan, you'll go first. Alrighty. Really? Uh, mine is draw three common contracts, keep one as a private, and place the rest back on top of the deck. So, I'm gonna do that. Three. I'm gonna take it into my hand. And choose one, put the rest back on. Okay, uh, my ability uh, Lynn has here in the plot phase, uh, Lynn can discard a common or heroic contract from the board and replace it, uh, flip the new contract face up. So I can go and have a look at a contract I don't like the, the skills of, and I can certainly say that there are too many arcane contracts that I don't really like the look of because I can go for just about everything else. So I'm going to get rid of this appraised magic item one because I think this 12 one might be a bit too hard for somebody else to do. So I'll replace it with another common contract and flip that face up. And yes, excellent. All right, so logic. A logic contract, which I can actually do. So it gives me more options. So I'm just trying to sort of control the option range on the contract board there. Alrighty. Uh, anybody else got anything to do in the plot phase? Nope. I think we're all good. All right. Um, so the last thing we do at the end of the plot phase is we generally announce how much money everybody has so that people can go ahead and plan their next turn. So I have a lot of money. Looks I have like six. I have 15. I have eight. <laughs> I also have six. All right, so I can basically throw more money at any problem than anybody else, but I don't have the ability to get these high level adventurers yet because to recruit these high level adventurers, uh, I already need to have recruited a lower level adventurer. I missed out on the first round, so I won't be spending a lot of money on these guys and everybody knows that because I'm not allowed to go and recruit them. Um, so I might go for builders or I might go for one of these guys and everybody probably knows it. Um, and everybody probably knows that I'm probably going to put a bit more money onto it to increase the probability of actually getting the adventure I want to go for. So that's a thing for people to think about. All right, so everyone flips their boards over and this is where the screens would normally come down. And all of this planning now happens uh, in the orders phase behind the screens that come in the game.
and we're all having a look around at the sort of things we want to go and do. I am ready. I'm ready. I'm ready as well. And I too am ready. So we all fill the boards. Yep. Yep. Okay, interesting. So huh. this, is, this is the big reveal moment in Guildmaster where everybody flips and sees whether they guessed what people would be doing. Uh, some interesting stuff happening here. All right, so is anybody going for builders first? I don't think so. That's not like it. Right. So in order spot, order one, anybody going for adventurers? I'm going for adventurers C. Yeah, but I'm going for A. A. And Brenner's going for Adventure B. All right, cool. So mm -hmm. um, all of these things are worked out in sequence across the board. We always start with uh, builders, and then we move through all the adventurers from A to D, A to F, and then we go through all the contracts from one to six. So nobody's there's no particular turn order. Whatever you ordered, it happens in that particular sequence. So we'll go ahead and resolve the order for Adventure A first. Chris just pays the money. Yep. Uh so I paid seven, even right. though the minimum bid was six. And even though no one else uh, bid on that adventure on the same order space, I still need to pay uh, the seven that I put down on the space. Great. All right. I'll replace that one out there for you. Thanks. All right. And then Brenna, what did you pay? Ooh, you paid I paid four. six for her. Yeah, six. I thought for sure somebody was going to go for her. Yeah, well, I was... Uh, very almost did, but I thought that other people would too. <laughs> I was definitely considering her as well, um, but I wanted to actually build my secondary skill, which is logic, or one of my, um, actually it's my third skill, logic, but this guy's quite good for that. All right, so I paid seven for Nadir, thinking that somebody might go for him as well. So I'll check that out. And is everyone getting their fame as they get these guys? I'll go ahead and do that for everyone. All right, thanks, Chris. So yeah. Um, all of these adept level adventurers score three fame each. All right, and now Nathan, I think you go for contract six. Contract six, yeah. So I've got three dice to get a ten. Um, hopefully, I can deny two people this for round two. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, not great. It's a nine. Uh, what's that? Nine. Yeah. Well, I've got two re rolls, thankfully. Ten, beauty. Okay, you got it. Uh, I also have another reroll from DevDan too. So yeah, or basically four, set. So I, could have, I could have actually just won that immediately, but you know, don't worry about that. I wanted to make it dramatic. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so I got the contract, which is three gold and two fame. I'll bump my fame up and grab my gold. And the bonus on the card is gain an extra gold or choose a guild to lose a fame. I'm just going to get an extra gold, so I'm going to get four gold total. How do you want to replace that, Nathan? Oh, we're putting a heroic there. Oh, okay. You're ready. I'm not. All right. So that's always good, ready. Good strategy. Nathan's already got a, a heroic level, sorry, an adept level adventurer, uh, which means he's probably more ready to do the heroic level contracts than any of us who haven't got them yet. But, you know, some of us have, so it should be okay. All right, so okay. everybody's order ones are done. Now we go into order twos, and again, moving from left to right across the board, anybody going for builders? I think the answer is no. Um, nope. Nathan's attempting to go and hire 
Adventurer C, but they've already left the tavern. So, ah, uh, how unfortunate. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so I went to hire an adventurer. They have already been hired. What a shame. Thankfully, I can use the private contract that I picked up at the start of the round using my like, plot ability and complete that instead with the team I put down. So I have. Uh... Oh, actually, one thing I forgot to get last time was I did that contract with Gilthor alone. So I should have got an extra two gold. You did? Cool. Yep. You should. Um, all right. So four dice to go to seven. I think we know What's how this is going to go. What's the mistake rule again? Uh, we can kind of let him uh, do it. I mean, in, in this particular case, you know, just it's not like he t took a decision back. He just forgot to pick up some money. So mm. we usually let that slide. <laughs> if you want to play uh, hardball, maybe it should though, be that Brenner, I don't know. <laughs> well, I like <laughs> I it. This three rounds are getting real. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a seven comfortably, so I get that contract. I get two fame and two gold. It's all happening. Um, God. You know it. And that's my turn. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Well, what do we got next? We've got Renna going for yeah. contract two. Contract two. Mm -hmm. So that's asking for 11 yep. logic. So I get three dice from Odeon. Bang on it. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, great. Good stuff. So what do you get out of that one? Let's have a closer look. Oh. So I'm going to get uh, two gold, three fame, if somebody would like to do that for me. And then I can sure, gain one that. gold or gain two gold and choose another guild to also gain two gold. Um, I feel like... Uh, I'm actually... poor and I just moved your token up. Please pay okay, me. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, come on, look, I'm on poor. You probably poor, deserve a tip poor. for that. Um, so Chris, Thank how you. about you and I both get two gold? That sounds great. And then I get another two because Odeon did that himself. Yeah. That's yep. his ability. I don't like it. I don't like it either. <laughs> we need an alliance. All right. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay. Uh, and then Chris and I, oh, before we move on to that, Brenna, how would you like to replace contract two? Are you ready for heroics yet? Or are you still doing the? Uh, I feel the ready. Stuff? I feel ready. Okay, yeah, ready. my team. Oh, yeah. They're like they're syncing together really well. We're doing some team building exercises in the hall. It's going great. Okay, excellent. All right. Uh, so next order, Chris and I are both trying to take on contract six, but it's already been completed, and we can now both either do a private contract or wander separately. And we don't really cooperate in this. We're just doing it in in isolation. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any private contracts and I could have planned that a little bit better. I could have gone for something that if I did fail to get it, I would uh, have a fallback. So I didn't really plan that very well. Chris, how about you? Have you got a private contract to go for? I do, but I'm choosing not to do it mm -hmm. for reasons that will be clear soon. Oh. So I'm going to do a wonder roll instead and just roll three dice. All right, and I am going to do the same. And yeah, that was bad. So I just got one gold. Oh, geez, mine's bad as well. One, three, one. But I do have two re rolls. Can you get me there? No, you can't. Not looking good. <laughs> get a six. Nine. Come on. Oh, uh, I get no. Gold. That... Unfortunate. All right. And that is. Uh... Oh, wait, is this one of the third action that's around? Yeah. Uh, uh, I do, but I didn't use it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Didn't have enough adventure to, to make the use of that space yet. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, that's round two. Yeah. All right. Everyone at the end of round two gets their income from their bar, which is paltry two for me, but same for you guys, except for Brenda, who gets four. Yep. Hanging off. We do all the admin on the board again. So first thing we do is move the round marker forward again and then flip it over again. So we're back to a half moon. Also going to be a blood moon in the upcoming round, which we'll talk about in a minute. Then we go uh, flip over the adepts and the two new contracts. Okay. All right. So we're now under uh, no builders to reset. So they still stay at the same low level. Okay. So we're now into round three. And we just have to check the contract board because when you get into the heroic level, 
contracts. Sometimes you can get things like these. If I zoom right in here, you'll see this is an event. Um, so oh, that's the best thing ever. At the moment, guilds can recruit adventurers of any rank and their minimum bid is decreased by two golds. So we don't have to go and follow the normal pecking order of having to have a, a heroic level, uh, sorry, an adept level adventurer to get a hero or a heroic level adventurer to get a legendary uh, adventurer. Um, so this is going to be an interesting round where people spend up big. But this event is only in place while the contract is incomplete. As soon as anyone completes it, it turns the event off straight away. So that'll be interesting. There'll be some cheeky shenanigans planning around that, I bet, this round. Alrighty, so are uh, we going to the plot phase of the next round? And it's, oh, yep. sorry, there is one other thing that happens in the startup of this round. Every Blood Moon round, at the um, start of round phase, everybody gets to draw a private contract and you can see it written there on the uh, on the board at the beginning of the Blood Moon round. So everyone gets to draw a private contract, which f is always a common contract. So everyone can just grab one of those and we'll add it to our private contracts. Okay, cool. Hopefully everybody got something useful. Can't say I did, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. Maybe later. How much money does everyone have as well? I have oh, very so relevant. Before we do that, uh, we need to go to the plot phase. And oh, right. I have a I have a plot ability. Does anyone else? I do not. Uh, a half moon? No. Okay, so this is why I didn't go for my private contract before. So back oh, to ability see. here. Uh, I can take three gold from each guild with more fame than me, uh, and other guilds may lose two fame to block this. Ooh, so I, I think like that's that, just... Yeah. Unfortunately, Kim is behind me. No, but, uh, no, it's Nathan. Yeah, well, I'm going to lose two fame. Uh, you're orange yet? You're orange, yet. Oh, sorry, I'm so used to being blue. This is just <laughs> old habit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Bella? Uh, what do you choose to do. I think I'm going to lose the fame as well. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be done. To pack up. Nice move, Magda. I was hoping for money, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, not with this ability on the board. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have six gold now. Okay. I have um, 11. I have 15. Ooh, 15. And I have 10. Okay. All right, but it costs two less to recruit these. Now, it is a half moon again, so if we can have a look, I'm um, focusing on all the adventurers. So you could get Kazuko for just three, Lyle for just five, Venju for four, Vatsana for six, and Scarlet for eight, and Zula for the very cheap price of 11 this round. So Nathan knows that I've got 11, and he also knows that Zula is in my colors. I'm not really sure. Nathan seems to be much more about the might type skills, so I'm not really sure if he's keen on going for Zula. But she's also just pretty awesome. So he may well go for her, and I've got to think about that. But nobody else can really go for Zula, so it's really just Nathan and I trying to psych each other out. Right, Nathan? Oh, yeah. She's mine. <laughs> yep. I reckon Nathan <laughs> Scarlet. That's my pick. We'll see. All right, should make this private. We're ready to go, right? Yeah, I think we're ready to yeah. go. I'm ready. Um, almost. Uh, I am not ready. I need to make sure that I don't make terrible mistakes again. Plan carefully. All right, I think I'm ready now.
then also ready. Everyone ready to flip? Well, in that case, I'm ready. Yeah, let's go. Ha! <laughs> Okay, lots of people oh. getting their cheaper adventurers in Order Space One. Oh, Nathan! <laughs> the tension as I was waiting for him to reveal which car. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we go through all of the um, from the left end of the board, so nobody's going for builders. Surprise, surprise. So um, Chris is going for adventure A, which gets for a mere three. Oh, that's a bargain. I'll take that. Oh, I put the wrong card on. Oh, I'm such an <gasps> idiot. I was meant, I, I actually wasn't done and I rushed to do the end. I meant to go for C in my second spot. That's why I put four down and not three, but oh, I put no. A down. So I'm going to, I'll leave it as that. Yeah. But, oh, no. And that is the general rule. If you do reveal and you've made some kind of mistake, which has been affected or affects another player, you can't really undo that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that would be too convenient, That's but. Right. Yeah, I put two exactly less so I could edge it out. Yeah. Oh, well. Oops. Okay. Uh, and Brenna, you now go and hire Adventure E or F? Which one is it? Uh, e. E, okay. Nice. And you're remembering to get your fame, Chris, as you go? Yep. Yeah, you did. All right. Brenna, you're going to get four fame from this hire. I'll do that for you. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Nathan, you and I, I think, have probably both turned up with 11. That's correct, yeah. And I only have five. It's not bad, though. I honestly thought you'd rock up with less dice than that. I rocked up with six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so when two guilds go for the same uh, adventurer at the same time and they also spend, also bid the same amount of money, uh, then they choose one of the skills um, from the team that they spent that they sent uh, and roll dice for that skill and whoever rolls the highest uh, will get the adventurer yeah um, so it looks like Nathan you're rolling six and Kim you're rolling five one. all right I'll oh, take cool. you on I can do this all right let's do it somehow my dice turns out how'd you go uh, pretty badly. <laughs> six, six, two, two, two. Yeah. All right. So that's what? 18? Yep. Yeah. I got nine, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Ooh, okay. But I can also change Ooh. this one to a four and there just win. You win. All right. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. So I shall now go and do a. Sorry, you did that? That's fine. All right. Yep. So Nathan wins. He muscled me out, barged his way to the front of the tavern with the bigger, with the with his particular bag of money and sweet talk. Zula is joining. And didn't, didn't pay a cent more than I had to. No, you didn't. That is what irks me even more. All right. Um, <laughs> so I'll go and just do a wandering roll. Um, so I get to roll five dice. Whoops. I get five fame for that. I get to roll five dice. Okay. So I've got 10, 19. No, no I've got 21, I should say. So I get two coins and two fame which is something at least got me nathan nicely done all right uh and that's it for order ones uh so we can go into order twos yep uh, well first uh, up nathan. is my yep. getting got by chris <laughs> <laughs> so, I cannot hire Adventurer A, yep, even though I intended to go for C and I want to cry. Um, so, I'm just going to do a wonder roll with three dice and get one gold. <laughs> Very sad turn all around. Come on, you got Zula. Hey. I, I did get a legendary this round. Yeah, it's, it's not all bad. To complain about. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. And then I think we've got... Chris and Brenna both going for contract two, which is interesting. Ooh. So. All right, what are you working with? Yeah. So I've got five dice and I'm going for Arcane, which needs 14. Mm -hmm. And you have 
four dice going for logic that needs 18. How mm. interesting. Uh, I feel like you can't afford to conflict on this. I, I do have two rerolls, but it's still four dice, and if you conflict, you're trying to get 22. 22. That's a Believe mm. so, in the heart of the cards. Well, make me an offer. <laughs> Uh well, I'm I'm happy to cooperate if I get everything. <laughs> you get the fame, but I'll get the I'll get the gold and the the bonus, which I kind of need. Mm. Hard bargaining. But if you roll higher, you can get everything. We can't. We can split gold, but we can't split fame, right? That's right. Yeah, we'll, we'll both get the full fame. Um. So if you, uh, I mean, he's he's not giving you a lot of room to move here. So if you, um, say you're going to cooperate, but then secretly conflict, you you'll need to roll twenty two with your four dice, which of course is mm -hmm. possible, but it's pretty long odds even with your rerolls. But yep. he's, 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 I think that's what he wants you to do. <laughs> you and you're saying that if, if we cooperate, you'll just allow me to participate in it, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you get the full fame. You stay ahead. Get some credit for being there. I ran in a race. He'll, don't forget, if he wins, he'll get two gold and two fame for each guild with more fame than him. Because he, he wants mm -hmm. you to stay ahead of him. Because he'll yeah. still get a that'll, four game. Four they'll give me an extra two. two that'll extra. just put me the same as you. That's true. I'll yeah. get ahead. We'll leave you guys both in the lead. Does that trigger before or after you get the card fame? You get the after money, the... You get the money first, yep. and then the card fame, and then the bonus ability in that order. So will, will we get any extra fame from that then? Yeah. Well, if, if we cooperate... Oh, we'll right. Both get from... the full damage. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But if we don't and... cooperate, then I won't get anything extra. And if I yep. conflict and lose, then do I get any other options? Like, can I wander a private of, contract? Of, of walking home, the tears <laughs> empty <eyes>. handed. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and explaining to boss how it, how it, how it all went wrong to boss Brenner. All right. <laughs> well, I'm ready to make my decision. Okay. Okay. We'll just yeah. reveal over here. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> it, really it, like, it, it physically pained me. I just want you to know that. <laughs> That's all right. And you gave him fame earlier for the well, mere act of moving your uh, fame marker. <laughs> I mean, now you well, see how I'm hoping this relationships really are. This full <laughs> fame suits that. Okay. So I'm rolling five. And I got 18. All right. Nice. So you we pass. I'm just going to roll mine to see what would have happened. <laughs> yeah. 13. Have you got rerolls? It's not a 22. You could do those yeah. two rerolls, and it could be a 22. <gasps> oh, there you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's close. It's yeah. one off. It's close. So if, you had, <laughs> if you had conflicted, you would have still just missed uh, another one. But, yeah. yeah. Sure. Weddy would have gone for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so okay. I'll take my four fame and I will yep. move it myself. Yeah. See, there you go. Okay. Don't don't be beholden to the fame movers. It's That's not right. it's not a good way to <laughs> no, I'll just zoom in <laughs> and we'll have a look. So, um, Chris is getting the four money and he got the four fame as well, yep. along with Brenner. Um, and then Chris, you do the bonus section. Yep. Uh, so we've completed with logic. I get an extra three gold and three fame for each guild with more fame than me. But I completed it with arcane. So instead I get two gold and two fame for each guild with more fame than me. Uh, Brenner's the only guild with more fame than me. So I get an extra two fame, making us both um, be on 18. And then I get another two. Okay. Well, that went very well for you, Chris. It did. Yeah. All right. I um, have the final order of the round, and that is Guala over here, and he is going for contract five, which is still there, needing uh, 10. He's doing it himself to try and get the extra money. 
and salvage something out of this uh, this turn. All right, so three dice versus ten. Let's get the three dice there. All right, so I got eleven, which is fine. Uh, and so I will get that contract. And then I'll get the three money from the contract, plus two from him. One, two, five money. And I get two fame. And I'm also drawing a heroic contract for number two that was completed. Okay. And for my bonus, I can gain one gold or choose another guild to lose one fame. Um, Brenna, I don't, you might be interested in this. Are you interested in offering me a gold if I ping Chris for a fame? Should see whether she has any gold first. She doesn't have any gold. But Nathan, I believe you offered the wrong person there, Nathan, Kim. <laughs> Any Why you want to ping me? No, no. To not I, ping I, Chris. I want to ping Chris. So Kim, to answer your question, yes, very interested. <laughs> but no gold. Yes, <laughs> it's the problem. Uh, I'm not paying you to ping Chris. You're going to ping. You you can settle that between the leaders. Uh, I've already suffered enough this round. All right, I'm just taking your money then. Pure self interest <laughs> wins out. <laughs> All right. Uh, what contract would you like to draw? Uh, I will. Still stay in the common level, I think. I'm okay. Really and before you move on, remember I did get my upgraded stables uh, oh, yep. in the first round, and I'm using it this round. So indeed, indeed. And Fang has nice. no card on him, which means what, Chris? Which means that he's going to do a private contract. All right. So when you, if you want to do a private contract or just wander, you can just place your team out in one of your order slots and don't place any order card on it. And that means you can either do a private contract or wander. So you're going to try and fence okay. the goods with Fang, all right? Yeah. Three dice to get a seven. Easy peasy. Uh, and because I did it alone, I'll get an extra two golds. So that's four all up. Oh, he makes it look easy. Plus two Fang. That was a power round. And now this contract effect, how it works is I'll take one of these neutral dice. And the bonus is I roll one dice and place it on the card. So I'll do that. Uh, three. And now in the future, I can use this boon ability, which uh, makes me discard this uh, contract card. And then I can add this three to any guile skill check. So this is a three I can add to a guile in the future, which could be quite useful. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, and that's the round. Yeah. All right, well, that takes us to the end of our three rounds, which is all we're going to take it to today. Um, you can see Chris has managed to um, connive his way out into the lead there with some nice catch-up coming from nearly, you were like nearly last with me at the end of the previous I round. was. Yeah, so I was with you. You had a fantastic round. Uh, I'll have to try and do the same in some future round. But uh, yeah, so that gives you an idea of how uh, Guildmaster goes, some, some shenanigans certainly going on there. Um, what does everyone think? Like, did anyone start to have their eye on any of the prestige upgrades? Let's just have a look at those quickly. <laughs> normally, you buy these in the second half of the game at some point, uh, and you buy them once you've sort of done a few things and you've decided on what your strategy is going to be throughout the game. Um, so let's just take a little bit of a look through these and see if anybody thought they might be sort of well-placed to take on any of these. Uh, so the first one up here is the Vault. You'll get an extra five fame for every 20 money you've earned at the end of the game. Yeah, and just quickly how these prestige upgrades work is whenever you, or when you go for builders, uh, instead of building any of these core and skill upgrades, you can build one of these prestige upgrades instead. Yeah. And once you've built a prestige upgrade, you just put them on top of your upgrade board like this. And then at the end of the game, you'll score this prestige upgrade for um, its unique effects. And you can only have one of these prestige upgrades. That's right. Uh, the, the, usually the single most, yeah, they give you the most fame from a single action. That's true, yeah. There's nothing else that really rivals the amount of fame you can typically get out of these. So Vault, you know, you might be looking to get 15 fame out of that if you can somehow hit 60. Uh, 60 gold at the end of the game, which is certainly possible. All right, Architect's Lodge, uh, you'll get 
three victory points for each second level upgrade you have on face up on your order board uh, sorry guild upgrade board at the end of the game and five extra victory points for each level three upgrade anyone feel like they were heading in that direction probably no probably not this probably, point, having probably not this game no i certainly wasn't. um yeah i i maybe could have gotten there i had a couple adventures that um could help me with that so oh, yeah yeah, I may have been able to get there. All right, and you also yeah, that's true. We do have Aelin and Efren yeah. here, which help you with builders. True. And a bar, which will give you more money. That's right. Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. So you might have started to be interested in that one. All right, the Great Hall and the Training Grounds both give um, victory points for the adventurers you recruit throughout the game. So the Great Hall just gives you one victory point per adventurer you have. doesn't really matter what they are. Uh, whereas the training grounds, you need sets of adventurers. So for each novice, adept, hero, and legend you have, uh, you'll get seven points for that set. So ideally, you're there you're trying to get two sets, and I think maybe very, yeah. very occasionally you can get three sets in that one and get twenty-one points, which is a huge amount. Three is really Nathan, hard, but it's, it's possible. Really hard. I would probably, I would probably be gunning for the sets actually this game because yeah, I was pretty able well to set up yeah. so early. That's right. Uh, it means right. I just have to snag a hero, and I'm halfway there. Yeah. Um, You're well set up to and, get 14 out of that, which is a solid score. And and another thing uh, to note is that because um, this is a Blood Moon, so normally the game would refresh the board. All the contracts would come off the board and be replaced with fresh new contracts. That ability to recruit any adventurer would be gone from that event. So... No one else has a hero yet. So currently, I'm the only person who has access to legend um, adventurers. So that would give me like a couple of rounds where I'd have like free access to legend. Very true. And then you so if I was able actually, to I do make that have happen. a heroic. Oh, sorry, you do? Oh, my bad. I got Scarlet. Oh, yeah. yeah, you, you, yeah that's right. You go on that round. But at, at the very least, it'd be like a lot less competitive yeah. right now, uh, which would be a nice little way to try to like, yeah, push an advantage there. So I'd go for training grounds point yeah i think that's i wouldn't no, buy it yet though i'd push towards it and then you know see how how i'm going around six or around seven and be like all right cool i think i can get two sets yeah especially because it. nobody else really seems to be i mean maybe brenner would you know maybe but only once you got a, a you yeah could. yeah all right uh, yeah and the next ones are both going to give people um, fame from the contracts that they get. So the Moon Temple gets you one fame per contract that you've successfully completed and have the card for over onto the left-hand side of your order board. So you can see I've only got one. Probably not that exciting for me. Brenner's got two. Nathan's got three already. And Chris has three already. So... Um, they might be interested in those ones, although one of Chris's is a boon. And unfortunately, one of the downsides of using the boon later on is that you have to discard the card to do so. So Chris has three cards, but he might really only have two by the end of the game. So, um, Although I do already have a heroic, so I probably would be aiming for the Sun Temple um, to get the sets. Yeah. So much like the training grounds for the adventurers, the Sun Temple looks for sets of common heroic and legendary contracts and four per set. Now that, in my experience from memory, guys, is probably the easiest one to clock 16 points out of. And every now and then you can hit 20 out of that one. But that's, yeah. that's a long reach to get to, to five sets. <laughs> yeah, it's Hitting difficult. those contracts hard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then people I also have the... Extra order space that'll help me with that. Yeah, definitely. Pretty early, so yeah. That right. would be my goal. You reckon you'd go for that one, the Sun Temple? Yeah. Yeah, I think you would. Pivot into the Moon Temple if it doesn't work out. Yeah, I think you're well placed. Now, I, I haven't done well enough to have any kind of clear strategy yet. I'd be waiting for another few rounds to see what form is out of that and what you guys seem to be building towards to make my decision about where to lean into. So. I'd just be filling the gaps, I think, at this stage in this game. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, that's three rounds of Guildmaster. Now, it goes for six rounds uh, at the end of the Blood Moon, as Nathan mentioned. Uh, anything that is still face up is going to be swept away and cleaned out and replaced by completely new things. So you can't really get stuck um, 
in the game with uh, certain combinations of cards locking up the game forever. Everything's going to keep refreshing and flowing through and give everybody lots of new options. Um, so yeah, that's the end of three rounds of Guildmaster. Feel free to play Guildmaster on Tabletopia uh, for free and uh, we hope you enjoy your first game of Guildmaster. Thanks everybody for playing. Thanks, Kim. Thank you.